Hello everyone to my attempt of trying to make Sunder work. This is my character, a wonderful gladiator using a bringer of rain, a varunastra, broken faith, and, and an anvil. The, same, uh, the rest of it is whatever you want. Uh, basically on rings I just want life and resistances. I found a pretty GG vendor's gamble that does all that and also gets 9% item quantity so might as well. Boots, movement speed, resists life, uh, life and resists, uh, belt, the same thing, gears mostly self-found with the exception of uh, uniques, uh, especially the bringer of rain. Uh, this doesn't necessarily have to be a legacy version, uh, but basically uh, my objective was to cap block at 78-78% with the anvil and then use the rest for damage nodes. The more and more uh, block chance you get from gear uh, and jewels, in this case a red nightmare, the more passive points you can use in damage and the better the build becomes. Uh, what we're doing with poison is sunder. It's an area damage skill, so it gets juicy, juicy double dipping, and gladiator provides nice bonuses to damage over time. Um, it, the build uses the capped block, uh, six endurance charges, uh, three frenzy charges. Uh, you can get seven endurance and five frenzy, I think, or four frenzy if you want to. Uh, it uses two instant life flasks because I am paranoid, uh, and that's serious promise that synergizes really well with poison, and two defensive ones, uh, basalt for lab running and a quartz uh, for breach survival kit. Um, I guess if you use a taste of hate, alliance roar, vessel of wink tar, then the build would deal twice the damage, but eh, I just don't bother buying uh, those flasks. Uh, for gemlings we have sunder, Fortify, Concentrated Effect, and Poison uh, as a main skill, and also a 4-link Warchief to help with single target. Uh, Warchief, Poison, Concentrated Effect, and melee physical damage. Uh, we have a cast and damage taken set up with Vulnerability and Tempest Shield. You can swap out and Feeble if you want to. Uh, and Tempest Shield also has Calling Strike, so everything automatically kills themselves, uh, themselves when they hit us when they are under 10% health. Uh, there we're running uh, Haste and Herald of Ash, as well as a Stone Golem. Uh, I use Leaf Slam, but you can use Shield Charge if you want with faster attacks. And there's also Enduring Cry for keeping uh, Endurance Charges up for bosses. So for the passive tree, um, we're taking the Gladiator Nodes, uh, Gratuitous Violence for Bleeding and the Explosions. Uh, Brain Forged and Versatile Combat and for the block chance and Outmatch and Outlast. This is a really good node. The only thing you're not using is the Endurance Charge on Kill, but it gives you Frenzy Charge Generation without Blood Rage. Uh, it gives you 10% more physical damage with the very easy to achieve uh, 3 Frenzy Charges that I currently have, and it gives 10% reduced physical damage, which is basically 2.5 extra Endurance Charges. Uh, the tree is kind of shit, probably. You can optimize it, but whatever. The main thing you need to be taking is Deadly Latant and uh, By the Blade, because those are frighteningly efficient with Varu Nostra. Uh, Endurance Charges, I guess. Uh, jewel Sockets. I'm using a Red Nightmare here because I saved up all the cash money for it. And uh, only with a Red Nightmare, a Legacy Bringer of Rain, a uh, Shield. The anvil and using a cast and damage taken tempest shield, you can cap your block to 78, 78, on, using no more skill points than what the gladiator node provides, and what is not outside as jewel. So it's extremely efficient. You can invest all the rest into HP and damage. Uh, yeah, and I also went for the templar area of effect damage. Uh, the build works in a way that uh, sunder is extremely good at obliterating the hell out of packs, and also has really good AoE for a melee skill. You don't need to scale Sunder's AoE, because uh, any reductions or increases only apply to the secondary explosions it sends out, and while they are really good, uh, they hit a lot of times, so it's not really necessary. But if you can, do get your hands on a 2120 Sunder, because it gives the quality gives increased area of effect, and it being level 21 also gives one extra to the radius. So basically, 
it just destroys packs and is slightly weaker against bosses because Thunder does have a 15% uh, attack speed reduction in build, but since we're doing some highly unethical poison double dipping, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, um, you can use Leaf Slam and Shield Charge in your weapon swap with a Bright Beak or something, for example, so you can get yourself a Blood Rage because this build, because it's a Binger Frame build, it is fairly jewel starved. Uh, not jewel, gem socket starved, but I'm leveling stuff in Haku weapons, as you can see. Um, if you're doing this build, but you don't have the budget that I have, that I uh, got along the process, that's why my passive tree looks so ugly, because I constantly reworked it as I got more and more gear, you can cap block to 78-78 without even a bringer of rain. Or under a nightmare, without any of those, just use the block nodes in this area of the tree, like precise interception and whatever the fuck, uh, aspect of the panther, no wait, it's double wielding, weapon artistry, there we go. So you can do that, but as you get more and more block nodes, uh, block nodes, block items, the, my first objective, because I'm playing hardcore, was to cap block, I only got damage after I kept block, uh, build has 6k health, a lot of mitigation, pretty good damage, uh, the main synergy that we have is uh, broken faith, uh, giving unholy might on block, so basically we have a permanent 30% plus whatever is implicit on the shield, added uh, physical damage added as chaos damage, uh, which is pretty strong. Varu Nostra, of course, Duelist has extremely efficient nodes with it. Sunder being AoE means that all the area damage uh, nodes and jewels that we can get will double dip, increase damage over time, and area damage is what you should be aiming for. Uh, of course, maximum life on jewels never hurts. Um, which one? Uh, that's the nightmare. Yeah, this one. Increased damage, increased area damage. And you need one of these jewels giving some marginal mana leech. That or the dualist leech cluster and your mana sustain is done. Especially with the fact that the anvil gives mana on block. And blocking, you will be doing a lot. So... Yeah, that's about the build. Uh, let's just go do some colonnade map that I used an awk on. Uh, the build can do pretty much any map mods. There's literally nothing stopping you. If it's blood magic, there's not even blood magic anymore. Never mind. Um, I don't know. If there's no region, you may want to turn blood rage off if you include it in the build. Uh... Can't really think of anything that fucks you up. You do a lot of physical damage, yes, so physical reflect is not really convenient, but it can be dealt with because a lot of your damage is still poison, and reflected damage, you block 78% of it, so it's not that bad, you can outreach in it. Uh, be careful at vulnerability, because anything that doesn't hit you, so degens, can be dangerous, so vuln, poison on hit, don't do it. Uh, whatever limitations life has, so if it's like 2 added damage and crit, be really careful because things can one-shot you because you're a life build. That's about it. This is rare monsters, chain, nemesis, less recovery. Let's go. Oh, uh, for League Stones we're using a Breach, Invasion, and Essence. Oh, right, also, your biggest enemy is your frame rate because, sadly, Bringer of Rain has extra gore mod on it that cannot be turned off. So, I don't know, keep that in mind, I guess. 
Also, I have shitty frame rate right now because I am recording and Path of Exile on the DX11 client cannot be recorded easily, at least with the OBS I'm using. So I have to do it windowed full screen and use a window recording, which is incredibly inefficient. So there's that. Sorry about it. Oops. Yeah, volatiles. Be careful with them. Also, Sunder has one inconvenient aspect. It does have a pretty slow, say, projectile speed that you can't really circumvent, so you may not be able to hit enemies all the time, which sucks. Oh well. Still a working melee build, and also live, so there's that. It's pretty satisfying. I should turn off my shit and breaches. Yeah, that's an example. Breach gameplay is wonderful. Please don't judge my loot filter. And I'll just show a boss clearing for presentation's sake. Alright, um, Colonnade is kinda annoying because this guy does Fire Trap, which doesn't hit, remember? and it's fairly powerful and there's also less recovery, so try not to stand on ground degens if possible. You don't actually care about his damage, only his ground trap. So, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the build. Peace the video. See you later.